Okay. Guess she is. <laughs> the Amber. Yeah, the yeah. Amber. Yeah. Hi, sorry, I'm bathing a child, so I can't turn my video on. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got everybody in here so far. Okay, well, it's um, it's a minute after eight, and we have a lot to cover. Um, so we're going to go ahead and um, get started, and so I'm going to let. Um, I'm going to let Jeannie kind of introduce, and then um, uh, we've got each of the teachers will be speaking a little bit, and um, I'm going to be kind of the time clock, so I'll nudge when it's time to sort of move on to the next topic. But um, Jeannie, I'll turn it over to you if you want to open us up. I would be glad to. So, well, welcome everyone. And thank you for joining us this evening. It's good to have you here. Am I getting feedback? Yeah, let's see. Um, I'm going to just mute everybody and then unmute you, Jeannie. Okay, thank you. I didn't want that. Jeannie's still muted. We good? Yes, got it. Okay. okay, thank you. All right, welcome everybody. We're glad you're here with us this evening. We have so much to share with you. So before we begin, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this evening. Father, thank you for each parent on this Zoom call, for each teacher, for Jenny, for hearts that you're giving these parents to rear their children, Father, to worship you, to love you, to make you Lord of their life. So, Father, may this evening be encouraging to them. May it help them on their journey, and may it be practical in their teaching. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So, um, if I've counted correctly, there are just 13 more days until summer break. And if your child's in the twos or the threes, it's even less. So as you begin to think about summer and what the days will look like for you and your children, I think it wise to begin planning for how those days will unfold. Not only is routine good for your child, but it's good for you too. Talk to your child about the rhythm of your day. Have a set schedule and a routine. Now, I don't mean that you should entertain your child every minute of every day. In fact, quite the contrary. So, and know this, that it will be hard work to train your child to go from a school routine to an at-home routine, but train you must. The work you put forth and the consistency you instill will pay huge dividends. It might take two to three weeks, but stay the course. And once your routine is well established and the rules have been set, you're on the way to a wonderful summer. So I want to draw on a little analogy here um, in terms of how you set your routine and the expectations that you're going to set for your children. Think back with me at the beginning of the year after carpool. When your children walked down the hallway, they were like little sheep who kept close to their shepherd, but most certainly wandered from the straight formation as they walked down that hallway and their eyes veered all over the place to an unfamiliar setting. But little by little, the teachers trained them to walk in a straight line their little hands behind their backs, quiet and attentive to any change that might be spoken from their good shepherd, their teacher. 
And little by little, they were trained to know exactly what to do upon entering that classroom. They felt confident each day because they knew what was expected of them. And they knew they had a good shepherd who loved them and who would take good care of them when they were away from their mommy and their daddy. Training must come before teaching. And before you can train your child properly, you must discipline yourself. Discipline lays the groundwork for teaching. And there is much opportunity for both during the summer months. So to frame our discussion this evening, we're going to look at the daily five. One, our home routine and daily chores. Two, devotional time, Bible reading, life application of verses, and maybe even singing. Three, playtime. We had a question on playtime about fostering outside creative play. And so as Miss Pat speaks to playtime, she will include an, an answer to that question. Thank you, parent, for asking that. The next four, rest time or nap time. And five, low-key academics for the summer. How, there was a question about how not to lose all this wonderful learning that your child has put in their little minds this year. So we'll take each one, one by one, beginning with the home routine and daily chores. And I believe that's you, Paige. Paige, you're muted still. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Summertime is a time for fun, but keeping to a more relaxed schedule can be very beneficial. Consistent routine will ease the transition back to school again in the fall. Um, I think one of the things you need to have in your daily routine is a consistent wake time and a consistent bedtime. There will be special occasions, of course, where you know, you're on vacation and you might stay up late, but that will help keep things going. Um, regular meal times and snack times are important. Don't let them graze all day long and enjoy planning special family dinners and picnics and fun things that you can't do during the busy school week. Um, assign responsibility. This is very important um, as part of your daily routine. Assign age appropriate things. You're Children can help um, unload the groceries, pick up laundry, pick up their toys, uh, help straighten up the playroom or whatever they need to do. But every day, maybe before you head out for an adventure, make sure the house is put together. You have toys, uh, your chores done. Um, so it's really important for each child to know they have responsibility as a member of the family. Plan some downtime in your daily routine. Reading or rest time is important as much for you moms and dads it is, as it is for the children. And then plan some fun adventures. Um, have a fun Friday or a wacky Wednesday. Um, plan art projects, pool time, visit the zoo or an aquarium, or just try out a new playground in your neighborhood. The best thing to keep in mind is keep them active and away from the television and the screens. So that it can be a good framework for your daily routine. Anybody have anything they want to add? I don't know. If everybody's still muted. I want to uh, second what Ms. Page uh, said about routine and giving um, assignments and jobs and things. They are, even, if, even in the three, the twos and threes, are, they are so capable of so much. Um, it takes just a little bit of instruction and you just keep to it. it the routine is what gets, 
it's what gets ingrained in them. So I think it is imperative that we do give them little jobs that they are responsible for, age appropriate, of course. Um, and, you know, that just little training, little first step, um, for sure, picking up their toys, picking up their room. Um, like Ms. Page said, I, I, there's so much value in that. We, we think it's, it's insignificant at the moment in the bigger scheme of things, but it is so important. And I have seen that um, over and over again in the training in, in uh, the butterfly class and the uh, busy bee class. So I, I second that for sure. Can I add to that, Jenny? Is there a minute? Just a quick minute. And remember that um, in training, there's the initial time that you spend instructing and modeling to, so that they know what you want them to do, what you expect them to do. So in, in the initial training, that is one stage. And sometimes you think that's going to go on forever, sort of like the way you think about preschool years. <laughs> until you have a child get old enough that they're no longer in preschool and all of a sudden you realize how time is passing so quickly. But anyway, going back to training. So that is that initial time. And then there's, you reap the rewards. Mm -hmm. At school, at this time of the year, we are reaping a lot of rewards because of the training that we have done. We are enjoying the children, they are enjoying school. And so I just wanted to just make a plug for training that it really pays off and the rewards are great. May I just add two cents to that too. Um, I think so often as parents, we may say something to a child like, go and clean up your room. But until we have demonstrated what clean looks like, they don't actually know what we're talking about. So you need to, to initially go and be shoulder to shoulder with your child and show them what you mean by the word clean. You, um, we need to be sure that we are filling the same word with the same meaning that the child is filling it with. You don't just go in and say, this isn't so clean. They wouldn't know what clean meant unless you'd modeled it and helped them see what that looks like the first time or so. So anytime you're working with a child, you model what it is, what your expectations are. If it's setting the table, the fork goes on the left, the knife and spoon go on the right. You model it, and so then they understand what the expectations are. Great. Um, do we want to move on to devotional time with Miss Nancy? Absolutely. If everybody's ready. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, I would like to start by reading uh, Deuteronomy 6. And this is um, the text where the Lord is um, giving the Ten Commandments, and um, there's a specific direction to parents. This is chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. 
write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So my, my section I'm covering tonight is easy in, in one sense because it's a command. Um, we have a lot of optional choices to make with our children, but as believers, this isn't an option. This is commanded by the Lord. So with that, how do we do that? And how do we not be overwhelmed by that? And um, how do we go about that joyfully? And um, I, I think they're, they're, when I'm thinking about my own family, um, I always knew it was important. I think that the, the ways I did it have definitely changed over the years. But um, some of the sweetest memories I have is just opening up the word of God um, in a version that's obviously very true to the original. This is one we, I use sometimes in the classroom, the big picture Bible. Another one we use at school is the Jesus Storybook Bible. And just cuddling up on the couch and reading together and taking time with it and um, answering questions that come about. Um, <clears throat> I've had some wonderful, wonderful memories. And as they get older, there's lots of materials you could use. Um, but obviously thinking about their stage, their developmental stage and what they can understand um, is, is important there. Right now, um, Soren and I, he's my youngest, he's nine and we have this one. The Action Bible, and it's um, the the artistry is done by a guy who used to draw for Marvel, and it's, so it's it's kind of got a realistic. Here's Goliath. Um, so the art is really cool, um, but it's very it does not stray from the text. I mean, it doesn't include it's it's only this big, but it doesn't include everything. But what it does include is very true to the text, and. Um, the passage in Ezekiel where the dry bones, you know, um, come alive. Soren was just fascinated with that story. And um, it's just, it's so fun because I don't remember, um, other than at church, I don't remember doing a lot at home. I had a couple different things I looked at um, and I looked at them over and over and over again, but they can absorb so much, so much. And, um, and really get to the point. Um, I also found this one, the Action Bible Devotional. So sometimes when you hit upon a good publisher or a good one, they'll, you know, if you go to their site, you can find more. This is another one from a Christian Focus Story Bible. There's lots of them. Um, so you can try out ones. And then also pictures are great, of course, with the ages that we're working with. This is a first Bible story book, and it's mostly pictures, very simple. Um, you know, there's Adam and Eve. You know, for, for um, children, of course, pictures are wonderful and great. And um, so that's, that's the most simple place to start. Um, there's lots of other ways to cultivate um, devotional time in the, in the home, not just the information that we would get from the Bible, but also just showing your child what it means to be a Christian through your piety, which would include your prayer time, um, your observance of Sabbath, to going to church, your um, serving one another at church, um, and trusting in God for your needs. So bringing our, your family needs before the Lord with your children. Um, of course, not all of them. Maybe you're not going to go into details about your finances and that sort of thing. But, you know, um, Johnny has a broken arm. Let's make sure we bring that before the Lord. Grandma's sick in the hospital. Let's make sure we pray for her and um, write her a card and, and those kind of things. I remember um, I lost my wallet one time, fell out of the car, and um, I was so nervous. And I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed out loud you know, to the, to the Lord, just, oh, I'll be by my wallet. And we drove back to where I thought I dropped it. And there was a man getting mail out of the mailbox. And I just walked over to him and, and said, 
would you happen to know if there, if you've seen a wall? I thought there is no way. This is downtown Philadelphia. There's no way. And would you know it? Somebody who's honest was walking by and had gotten the wallet and put it in the mailbox. And my kids got to see that, you know, I was just, Lord, the last thing I need is to lose this wallet. And, you know, it was really a miracle. I, I just named it right there. Like that was a miracle. That just doesn't happen in downtown Philadelphia. So they got to see that. I remember singing uh, when Ilsa was, I don't know, approaching two and, and two, and she was in her crib still. And I would sit by the bed and we would have her pray prayer time. And then we would sing some songs before I would go. And, um, it was just such a sweet time, even, you know, when she was one and two saying what she wanted to pray for. And sometimes it was silly, um, to, you know, would be silly to others. Like I want to pray for my bear cause he has boo boo or, you know, but they're learning in their own, you know, way to, to bring what they care about, you know, nothing's too small for the Lord and teach them that that's important and nothing is too small to pray about for them. Um, so that's just a little snippet of, of where to start, you know, very simple. Um, and this is a book, this is actually a photocopy of the name of the book and the, is that backwards or is that right? It's right. right. Okay. So it's um, Kent and Barbara Hughes. Um, and there's a book called Disciplines of a Godly Family. And in it, you know, she's going to, he, she and he are going to go into depth about what else you can do in more particulars. They, I, I love them. They were mentors to us when we were in college. And, um, they also have a book called Disciplines of a Godly Woman, which is very um, helpful. And for moms, it's very chewable in terms of the, the size of the chapters and that sort of thing for young moms, especially starting out families. And there's also Disciplines of a Godly Man. And it talks about, um, you know, how to, how to grow in your faith, uh, specifically through, um, you know, obviously the Lord has you grow in your faith through the Holy Spirit, but what are the things that we do in terms of discipline to um, facilitate our growth? And, um, and there's, there's a lot of really good stuff there and, mm -hmm. and good stories um, up from their lives personally um, that have inspired us. So the other thing, am I at the time, Jenny? How am I doing on time? Sorry. I We've can't got hear. a couple more minutes. Um, okay. We want to also just give um, Steve okay. if anybody else wants to add anything. That's so great. Yep. And I put in the chat, Nancy, that we would share the resources that you've shared if you want to give okay. me a list so I can send it on. Okay. Great. So did anybody else want to add anything, teachers, before we move on to playtime? I would just add a, 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 a neat thing that um, we, you know, do at school is obviously memorization of scripture. So I would just encourage you to pick a psalm or a proverb, something, you know, that would be memorable that you can say, oh, in 2020, 20, and we memorize Psalm 21 or whatever it is that um, I would just encourage you to keep that memorization going that they're already established um, in each of the classes. And they'll be really proud of themselves and, and you'll be amazed what they can learn. And then <laughs> obviously what we learn along with them, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's encouraging to see what they can do. It's, it's a little discouraging to see how hard it is for us at our age, but it's also a way that's been really great for me to try and challenge myself as I'm challenging my children. So I, I would just, those are great things that Nancy has established, but I think if, um, if you set goals at the beginning of the summer of, you know, let's read through the book of John or let's m memorize a Psalm. It, it just set a goal. Otherwise you'll get through three or four weeks. You're like, Oh, sh I haven't done any, <laughs> you know, the scripture reading has fallen by the wayside. Just that's how it happens in our house. If I don't set goals um, and kind of to encourage myself, um, it sometimes doesn't happen. And if I could just jump in an easy way to do that, uh, Bible memory verse is to just mom or dad, write it out on a little poster board keep it in the kitchen or in the playroom yeah. or wherever, and then just go over it and yeah. over it and then get another poster board and do another verse or two. Yeah. And it keeps it right in front of you. Yeah. 
And I would when we were that, that, has I hers like, written on a wall. They have a chalkboard wall. If you have a chalkboard place, that's, that's also a great place to keep it up all the time for them to see. When we were at the beach, we chose a psalm to memorize um, with the children. And it was, this is terrible. I haven't got my Bible right here. It's either Psalm 8 or 18. I think it's 18. But it just talks about God's creation, the glories of it. And being there at the beach was just such an apt setting. So I think, you know, if you go on a trip, and we were there, I think, a week, a week and a half, and we memorized it. All, all the adults and all the children. Mm -hmm. So if you're on a trip, you can do the same thing, especially if you're in the car. <laughs> a good thing to have in, when you're driving in the car is the, uh, the booklet of catechism questions. Uh, when Kinsey was little, we went over that over and over and over again, and, and she still has catechism in school to this day. So it just continues on. I've, and uh, just to have the uh, God's truth right there at your fingertips. I mean, it is so convenient and it's just fun. Um, encouraging kids to maybe compete, see who would get the most questions uh, right and, or, you know, something like that. Um, definitely very helpful, very out there in the forefront of, of their minds, reviewing those catechism questions. So I would recommend that. Great. Thank, those are such great ideas. And we could, I'm sure we could fill the rest of our time talking about that which I think we have done on other um, on other uh, in evening of, of encouragement and we will next year too. just talk again um, about ways that that you can really build that um, devotional time and helping your child to um, to develop that in their own life we're going to move on to play time now well I think that's my my turn to talk and um, you know, it makes me stop and think about the marvelous, marvelous times that I had, not only in my childhood, but as my children were growing up. And I think so often we have gotten, we didn't have air conditioning, so it was cooler to be outside than it was inside. And sometimes we have to move our children outside. Um, because they have become very conditioned to be in a cool and comfortable environment. But that might mean that you want to get out early or late in the afternoons. But being outside is so important to little people. And I think there was a parent who asked the question about the fact that their children tended to look to them to be their entertainment. And let me stop and and speak to that and and welcome any other comments that any of the other teachers would like to um, make. But I think it's incredibly important that your children learn to entertain themselves. Um, the more that you entertain them, the more they will expect to be entertained. And you're actually robbing them from um, the opportunity to be creative and to, to develop their own motivational skills. I was um, very interested in, in teaching my children to entertain themselves when they were very little. Wow. And back in the day when you had play pens, I would have different baskets of toys and I would put a different basket in and they would have that basket for a certain amount of time and then we'd remove it, put in something else. On trips, as we would go down the road, I'd go to the dollar store and I'd buy lots of different cheap, little trashy, entertaining things. And as we'd go down the road, I would hand them something to entertain themselves. I did not want them to come and look to me for all of their entertainment. So I would provide certain things for them to make up cardboard boxes. Um, we used to love to have a cardboard box and turn it into a 
a fort or a, a dollhouse. Um, little simple things like that. And when you think of summer, I think of outdoor water. Uh, sprinklers, everybody seems to think in terms of going to the pool, but you can just turn on the sprinkler in the backyard. Another fun thing that I used to do with my grandchildren is I would go to the dollar store and buy really cheap paint brushes, big paint brushes that you would maybe paint a piece of furniture with and give them a bucket of water and they would paint the driveway. They thought that was the most amazing activity in the world. Um, we would have sand, we, we had a sandbox. We had um, just a, one of those little plastic pools in the back with buckets and all kinds of toys. But it was always their job to entertain themselves. I would provide some, some toys and they were limited to that outside time. There were things like um, bicycles, they had bicycles, we had roller skates, we had jump ropes for the older children. We had, um, as I said, sprinklers, water guns. What fun they used to have with things like that. Um, bubbles, get, some, get, some, get a, some bubbles for them to play with. Um, sidewalk chalk, chalk, everybody loves that. How about starting a little garden? If you don't have a, a good spot, get a, get a tub and um, do some, plant some tomatoes or something. Have a project outside like that, a scavenger hunt. Um, you could give them a list of things that they have to go and find. Those are all kinds of creati creative ideas that you can share with your children. But you must establish boundaries, Mom. This is my time. Your time is to go out here and play and entertain yourselves. My time is to sit over here and maybe read a book or crochet or paint my fingernails, but that's your time to go over here and do what you want to play, uh, want to do in this large bucket of things that are provided. Anybody want to add anything to that? I think that's great just getting them outside and I think um, somebody did mention earlier just screen time just let's you know really really try to limit that screen time it's an easy trap to fall into in the summer um, if they're bored and they're saying they're hot and they want to come inside and you're busy with something to just let them park themselves in front of the TV but um, it's just it, it it, it robs them of those same things that they're robbed of if you're constantly being their entertainer. If they've got you or the TV constantly entertaining them, um, then they don't, they don't learn to um, entertain themselves and just really make a lot of fun memories. <laughs> I, um, you could also have a boredom jar. Um, my children told me they were bored one time and they never came back and said it again. Um, <laughs> you, it was not fun to tell mom you were bored. I think I gave everybody a toothbrush and told them they could scrub the tile in the shower, um, little things like that. And they said, mm, we'll find something else to do. But you can have a boredom jar and with specific uh, ch chores in there. And if they come and say, I don't have anything to do, you could say, I've got something for you to do. <laughs> and I would put some of the most undesirable things in the boredom jar. They won't be coming back saying they're bored. Badminton, that's another one. Badminton and croquet, things like that, that people used to play as a family. Um, those are great things. Get them a butterfly net. Um, they're just, they're just a million things that children can do outside that don't include mama. Yeah, my son had a pogo stick and I'm surprised he didn't wear a whole 
through the driveway. He would bounce in the same spot for hours. I don't know how he yep. did it, but he did and he loved it. Um, all right, well, let's move on to, um, after all that play, they're gonna need some rest time or nap time. Who was talking yes. about nap time? Yes. Okay. I love rest time. <laughs> 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 and I bet a lot of young mommies do too. One of the benefits of establishing a daily rest time is that your child's body will begin to adopt a routine of some downtime. And whether um, they actually go to sleep or whether they are just quiet. We want to train them for this time. It requires um, establishing a daily routine of rest, resting in the summertime is going to require some training. And what do I mean about um, a rest time? Well, it's a quiet time. It's an alone time that a child spends in their room, on their bed, or with different age children, you establish it age appropriate. But, um, they are to be alone and they're to be quiet until mother comes and tells them it's time to get up. To help me think about this, I wrote out an acrostic using the word training. So if you can picture in your head um, each of those letters for T, that that stood for me the time the time of a rest time it's a daily time and um you are you'll want to establish an hour or two hours depending on the ages of your children and um but you want to do that and you want to be consistent about it R, R made me think about the fact that it's to be regular and to be regulated. <laughs> when it's time to, to rest, you initiate it. And when it's time for rest time to be over, it's over. You are the one saying that. A um, makes me think that rest time is adult led and supervised. It's supervised until um, the routine is adopted by the child. So you are training them to expect to have to be quiet and to be alone until rest time is over. I they have to be instructed in exactly what you want them to do. Maybe some children can look quietly at books or do puzzles, maybe on the floor in their room. I'm thinking of the three little girls that our daughter is raising right now. who are second grade, kindergarten, and three years old. They all have rest time. The youngest one is sleeping. The middle one is playing quietly and the oldest one is reading or involved in building, but they're quiet in their rooms, in their places. In non-negotiable. <laughs> and by that, I mean that they 
your children cannot get up and come and ask you questions or ask, is rest time over? They are to be quiet and in their place until you come and tell them it's over. If they do get up, oh my goodness, then we got to start the time of rest time over. Pretty soon they won't want to do that because that means it's going to make it longer. By non-negotiable, I mean that unless you're burnt, and this is what I, well, I say, unless you're burning because you're on fire or you're bleeding, you need to be in your room quietly playing. Um, and G is the last. Rest time is really beneficial for the, for the physical growth of your children as well as their brains. It's really known that the development that's going on right now in these preschool years is phenomenal and they need rest. So, happy rest time. Thank you, Ms. Connie. And we've um, just got about 20 minutes left. So we wanted to give the teachers, um, a, a teacher on each level time to kind of talk about academic review for over the summer and save a little time for questions at the end. So Paige, do you want to start with the twos? What can parents be doing to reinforce what, um, what our, our children in your class have learned this year? Well, I, I told most of my parents during our conferences this, this week that um, practice cutting, uh, we've been working on their fine motors and you can do that too. You can do Play-Doh and string beads and all, anything to help strengthen their fine motor. Um, but practice cutting, when, when you're coloring, make sure they're pinching their crayon instead of holding it in their fist. Um, you can re renew, uh, review numbers and colors and shapes and reading to them is huge because that helps build their vocabulary. Nothing high pressured, no drilling of flashcards or anything. Just just in your, you know, in your quiet times together or just during an art time, just practice some of those things and review some of those things. That's about all. Thank you, Paige. Vaughn, do you want to talk about the threes? I do. Thank you. Um, I would continue, I would encourage parents to con continue to what we have developed already um, in fine motor skills, just like Ms. Paige was saying. Um, I have found this came from a wise old owl that's in this group right here to train them uh, with the grip and to, uh, to train the kids to use the grip and to um, apply more pressure when they color is have them on their tummy, on the floor, with their elbows on the floor and holding the crayon and coloring. I saw amazing growth when I uh, implemented that. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, <laughs> when I implemented that um, suggestion, and it was incredible. I, I was bragging to one of the parents over the conference um, uh, the other day how incredible the, the transformation in forcing the kids to lay their arms on the table or the floor so that they can apply pressure. So that was the one thing that, um, that I would recommend is encourage them to be on their tummy and, and color. Um, of course, fine motor skills that Ms. Page was talking about is awesome. Um, Cutting is always so great. We we have lots of fun cutting in our class. Um, uh, let's see. Of course, limit screen time that we've already covered. Um, read, 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 read. This, if 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 I had to tell parents about about one thing, this is this is what I would do. When I read, or when I used to read to my child, I would finger read. I would, um, I would just point to the words as I read. And it would just be a normal speed. I'm not doing too slow, pointing out, breaking down each word. But I had introduced um, the, the letters or the words to my child early, early on. And she um, learned to read before she learned how to 
uh, how to work the blends. And Miss Connie was asking me, Vaughn, she knows how to read, but she doesn't know her blends. And how did that happen? And I had no clue. I didn't know what to explain to her. The only thing that I could think of was when I was reading, I was finger reading with her. And she just, she just did that. Um, so it might have been a fluke, but that was the only thing that I can think of. So I would encourage that. You could be my, my guinea pigs. <laughs> you can try it with your children and see if that works for you. Um, let's see. I would uh, go outside with the kids a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, please go. Um, Miss Nancy has some resources in stories. Um, I think Jenny has posted them on our, uh, our website. Um, we have a YouTube channel that we, there's a lot of videos on there. Ms. Nancy has lots and lots of um, fun videos that she's done there. So it, have the kids um, watch that. I think they're, they're really good. Um, let's see what else. Ms. Nancy, feel free to, to jump in if I um, miss anything, if you need to um, do anything. Um, yeah, outside time, reading. That's where I would start. Yes, and I'd say too, just practicing those, that letter recognition and sound association so that they're getting ready for Ms. Pat and Ms. Cheryl to take off with this blend. So don't let that, um, don't let that phonics um, uh, that they've gained over the course of their three-year-old year, -old year um, get lost in the shuffle over the summer, but just keep reviewing those those consonants and short vowel sounds and um, we're, we have a resource on our website we need to update it a little bit um, but just to help you with those phonic sounds the is it the leapfrog video is uh, is good to um, it's I think it's called the letter factory um, it's you know we obviously we say no screen time, you know, or try to limit screen time. But if you're going to do screen time, at least have it be productive with helping them review their letters and helps you to even um, to make sure you're producing sounds correctly if you're practicing it with your your child. But um, that that phonics practice is a good thing too. Um, you know, I like to just just jump in there when you're reading to your children. I'm all about words and language and vocabulary and I think it's so important that as you're reading you ask your child what what does that mean what do you think that word means explain words to your children fill them with the proper meaning we have a I have a, a little story from years and years ago when I threw out the word depart and I said, does anybody know what the word depart means? And one of the children raised his hand and he says, it means comb your hair. And it made me realize that it's so important. He was thinking the part, depart, instead of moving away from. And so as you're reading to your children, stop when you think they don't know what a word means and explain it to them so that they have your building vocabulary as you go i was you were talking about that before pat and, it, and that later i thought about the amelia bedelia books and how much mm -hmm. i loved those when i was little because she would get so she would take a word and would have a different meaning for it and something really yeah. silly would happen so those amelia bedelia books would be really fun for that, just kind of exploring that, that vocabulary but um, don't assume Assume your child is spelling a word with this with the proper meaning is my whole point here yes all right and who who's talking about pre-k is that you Cheryl yeah, I am and and just building on that I would just say the theme of um, academics for the summer is review not new mm -hmm. um, it, it shouldn't be high pressure you shouldn't be sitting down with a ton of workbooks for them to <laughs> spend hours on but just that it's a fun time of reviewing of what they've learned this year not not anything new necessarily um, so in that line i, I just have a few multi-sensory activities building on what they've learned phonics wise in the pre-k and you can do a lot of these also with threes as well with with just letters um, just writing letter, uh, letters, letters, uh, CBC words, or blends, or just plain letters in shaving cream and saying the sounds, or in sand on a cookie tray. 
Um, using magnetic letters um, is great for spelling out blends or um, practicing reading consonant vowel consonant words. Um, just picking up a bag of um, plastic magnetic letters from the dollar store, hiding them in your house and letting them have a fun scavenger hunt. Find the letters, come back and have the vowels be the base and they have to build um, words or blends with the letters they find in the house. So just making it fun for them, not maybe just sitting with flashcards <laughs> all, all summer long reviewing their blends, but trying to come up with fun activities for them to do. Uh, another thing you can do is take um, a glue stick and glue um, letters on a piece of paper. So you write out blend or uh, write out a CVC word like cat in the glue, and then you cover it with another white clear piece of paper on the top or white paper and they would use it as a crayon rubbing to find a mystery word or a mystery blend or a mystery letter so just a fun thing for them to continue to use those fine motor skills as they're coloring as well but they don't know they're coloring a worksheet but they're still finding a mystery word or a um, blend or a letter whatever they want to find um, also just with numbers finding and grouping groups of tens of things in the house um, go find ten um, socks all over the house or, you know, you, um, just different things and then they can come back and practice their counting skills as well out loud with you. Um, I also think it's fun to memorize. I love memorizing, as I said earlier with scripture, but also with poems. Um, just finding a fun poem for them over the summer. Maybe they're interested in elephants. My daughter's all into elephants. So if you find a poem on elephants, fun thing. The, the internet is an amazing thing. Pinterest is an amazing thing of finding fun things like that that you can just memorize together and and they don't they don't know the skill that they're using to do that. They just think it's a fun fun thing to do. Um, and then I highly highly encourage everybody's been saying read read read. But and I, I think it's great to read picture books. But I also think by pre K it's an amazing thing to pick a novel for the summer and read it together. It's more fun for you as a mom and a dad to read a chapter book that's something like Charlotte's Web or Winnie the Pooh or um, Trumpet of the Swan, something like that, that like Miss Pat was talking about, the rich vocabulary, that they're gonna hear some rich vocabulary and then it's so much more fun for you than reading the picture book for the 20th time. Um, it, it just is a sweet time in the afternoon after you've been to the pool and done all these outdoor activities to just after rest time come together again and read you know a, a chapter in a book each day um, it's just so fun and and it, it just is a sweet time together not just for them for but for you as a mom i think as well or as a dad um, it's a sweet time um, what else i hope that's i mean there are great workbooks and i'm gonna i give those to my class too. <laughs> uh, explode the code there's some great phonics and summer bridge activities to continue those activities but i, I would limit that i would just as you plan out your schedule for the day, it's not going to be, you know, two, three hours, even, even maybe just two, three days uh, picked out a few minutes of those days for the workbook work or something. But um, there's just so many. And then the, again, the internet has amazing, amazing games <laughs> and ideas for you um, to pull up. We are, we are so blessed with many wonderful resources and, and board games. I, I love that too playing board games that are appropriate for their age. Um, there's so many great things that build on the phonics that we've established as well with a lot of those games and numbers as well. Dominoes, Uno, all those fun, fun games. So have fun, just have fun, come up with fun. And if you come up with something fun, let me know so I can <laughs> share it with others. Thank you, Cheryl and Connie, kindergarten. I agree with Cheryl so much that um, summertime to me is a great time to review. And you can, you can use your children's papers, any papers, and, and from kindergarten you'll have books to read. Um, or your children will have books to read, I mean. They, they have a whole series of books, not of course, we had the loaning books, but they have books that they have brought home and will be bringing home for the rest of the year that they will keep stories to read. They love doing that in class and they love it. They love the repetition. They love being on top of things where something is 
is familiar to them and they can do this. So I highly recommend reviewing. Um, you can look at their Bible verses um, when, and, and use those. Go back over them. They will love being able to say them to you. Um, your family can um, uh, use the ones that are on the back of their, their folders. And along with review, oh, counting, rote counting. You don't even have to have anything. You can be in the car going somewhere. But um, rote counting of all sorts is, is such a fun and good activity. And then with kindergartners, you can, you could have a play store because we've talked about coin values and you could set up um, having a store and they would have so much fun counting coins. We, they should be familiar with telling time. And so that can be part of your routine. You can talk about at such and such a time we do this, you can show them what the routine's going to be and outline it with by the half hour or the hour. And then um, you can use your calendar. You can also just take, you can um, make a number line, write the numbers. And especially if you could, um, and, and one way to do it is um, if you take a roll of, I think it's called tape register paper. It's just a roll of white paper that's about this is the right size to stretch out. <laughs> and, you can, and you can do every number family. You can do the ones, then you can do the tens, then you can do the twenties and so forth. And put them up on the wall. Anyway, have fun. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions from our parents or comments? You can feel free to un unmute yourself and ask any ask away. I do not have a question, but I have a comment. <laughs> this is, and I'm not going to show myself. I have a wisdom tooth thing going on, but um, this is Lauren Carlson. But one of the things is I'm a fly at the wall at Redeemer constantly, and these teachers just do it so naturally they don't even recognize it. But what they have done all year is that in everything they do, they point back to Christ. And that is something that you have to pray. I remember asking Miss Cheryl one time, like, how are you doing this in your class? How do you even remember to like stop and point this back to the Bible? And she says, I pray every day before these kids come into my class. And so I've taken that, that every morning I wake up and I say, Lord, make me intentional to bring you into everything. And so that's when you're reading Charlotte's Web, you stop and a pre-K student can understand that Charlotte isn't just a spider, but Charlotte shows us something about Jesus. Talk about that with them, don't be scared. And stop when you're on the walk, when they bring up an acorn to you all excited and don't just say like, oh yeah, there's thousands of acorns, it's Atlanta. But what the teachers at Redeemer would do would stop and say, let's look at this acorn. Let's talk about it more. What does an acorn become? Where does it go? And that's where your most intentional teaching is going to come from. And that's where I see their teaching come from through, through the year, um, like the butterfly release and Miss Connie just talking about how that's really a transformation of our heart, how it's a picture. So they do it so naturally that it is not even something intentional, but as a young mom, it's something I need to think about, um, but it's so important. Catherine, I think you were gonna say something. Or ask um, yes, I had a question for, well, Miss Connie, you're the one that talked about it. So I am hardcore about quiet time as far as, oh, it is on the schedule. But my boys, they all room together. And so quiet time is in the room, but it is not quiet. So I was wondering <laughs> if you recommend, um, sorry, if you recommend like, separating them or do you or should I just like make them read because they're not sleeping 
um, anymore uh, at their at their age. And so I didn't. Well, maybe so the three the three grand girls that I was talking about mm -hmm. are roughly the ages of your boys, I think. Okay. And and they sleep together in one room. Okay. But for quiet time, they are in three separate places. Okay. One is sleeping and the other two are doing other things. One might be building something on the floor and then I mentioned one would be reading. All right, but that alone time is important. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, we have, Rebecca said that there were several questions on Instagram about how to keep sibling arguments at bay during those long summer days. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts, teachers, how to help with sibling arguments? Make it, make it uh, so they don't want to do it. You know, I, I, I hear a lot about parents saying, well, I think it's just good for them to just work, work it out. And I've always been a little bit opposed to that because if they were both the same size and the same strength and the same age, that possibly something like that would be, be, be something to consider. But in a family, there's one that's always bigger, always stronger, always the older one. And um, so we just, my father grew up in a family of seven children that fought all the time. And when we were growing up, he, he sat us down and said, we are family. We will be attacked from the outside. You'll go outside of our home and you'll have, a, have someone who will maybe not treat you the best, but within our home, we are one. We protect each other. We, um, stand up for each other. There's no fighting in our home. And believe it or not, my father was really amazing. He said, I'm not gonna ask questions. When we did have a fuss, he said, I'm not asking questions. Both of you are getting punished because the rule is there's no fighting in our home. And as a result, we really grew up not fighting. So that's just a that's just a little peek into one way of looking at it. Um, from a guy who grew up with a lot of brothers and sisters who fought all the time. And th the other thing that I would say is that if you allow your children to fight when they're little, at what point are they going to stop fighting? Many times, children who are allowed to fight when they're young will continue fighting as adults. Yeah, and it's a good opportunity to just to bring um, God's word into it, talking about forgiveness, talking about um, putting another's needs before your own. Um, yeah, and they're not going to get it perfectly, but it's uh, it is a good chance to just kind of to bring. God's word to bear in those situations too. Um, we've got another question from um, Meredith. She says, there are a few of us moms who are pregnant, going to be having babies this soon, this summer. How do you recommend continuing routine when a new baby is changing things? We will have lots of relatives visiting, we have a few camps scheduled. They will go to Nana's a little while. Any help would be appreciated. I'm thinking of the, teaching them how to train themselves. That's really what's, I mean, not train themselves, entertain themselves. That's really um, coming to mind. You know, mm -hmm. you might not be able to um, be out and about or supervising things in the yard the way you might want to, but um, still finding a, a way to train them to be able to entertain 
themselves. And maybe when you you're training that baby to sleep, <laughs> maybe you have some time to go out in the backyard and um, and and supervise outside play. But any other thoughts, you all? I also think I would ask grandparents if you have established a routine or whoever's going to be helping you to share that with them. Share that you this is your goal is to have this routine to continue in the summer. Will you help me with this? And probably they're going to love that you have established a rest time. They're going to love the schedule as well. And um, I just think if you ask them, they're probably going to want to jump in and help you any way they can. Um, but if we don't ask, sometimes they don't know. They don't understand what you've established if you don't tell them. I, I so agree with what Cheryl said. And I think that what you want to do is try to continue your routine. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll have to modify some parts of it. Mm -hmm. But I think that you, your children will feel um, more secure knowing what's coming next because they're in this routine. And, um, as, and then the other thing I would say is just really pray. Ask God for wisdom. It, it's such an exciting time. <laughs> Any, any other comments or questions? I agree with Connie. It's such an exciting time. I was talking to a friend who's expecting um, her third and she just found out her oldest may have to have surgery before she's due in a couple of weeks. And I would just encourage you to accept this is an epic year in your family's life and everybody's gonna have to be real flexible but to have some um, some boundaries around what's going to be included in that and permission for you as the parent to not have family visit if it is not helpful. Um, you may want to check out if a more a family member whom you love but who is not actually helpful can come at another time. And that's perfectly okay. Um, it was so sweet. I have loved when we've had a new baby with a little bit older children. Um, it's just one of the most precious times we've had as a family. And the ways that they can help, how they end up responding to diapers and, you know, burping and sneezing and all these funny, cute things that happen. And also... You just have to be prepared for the unexpected with newborns. You know, uh, do they sleep? Do they have problems? Are there multiple trips to the hospital? Um, with my last one, I had some trouble feeding with my that I hadn't had, and it was very stressful for me. Um, and my my other kids were just big helpers, and um, you know, very much take it easy on the meals. If a church offers to bring you meals, accept the meals. Um, you know, allow your children to experience other people's cooking, which they may or may not like. Um, you know, plan for your husband to take some time off, um, if that's at all possible. If not, you know, you may have to think of someone else. I remember having, I had C-section, so I had to have someone to help me lift my bigger children who were enormously huge at two they were like 42 pounds so i had a college girl come for a couple weeks during the day to lift things for me and um that was just somebody i paid by the hour and i don't typically do that you know i don't pay for someone to clean my house or other things like that but during that time it is you got to be careful of your um emotions um to protect against postpartum depression and other things that might be unexpected and you know, have, have that structure like we've been talking about tonight, but really lots of grace there, lots of understanding. Um, and in this big change, it's just a, it's a big and epic for everybody. We had, I remember if you have a little, little person, two or something, maybe who you were nursing earlier this year or something, um, you know, before you were pregnant, um, you can have them sit next to you when you nurse your other baby with their little milk cup or whatever. If you have a, 
you know, kids that close in age, sometimes they feel left out from the attention. There's ways to include them, you know, when you're so much sitting and feeding another child all the time. Um, you know, that having little jobs of bringing you water or, you know, things like that. I, I, I think those summers and falls that we had that dynamic in the house, I loved it. I just thought it was the best. So look forward to it and enjoy it. I wish I was a fly on the wall. <laughs> hey, Meredith, congratulations. I can't wait to see the baby. Um, great suggestions from the, uh, the other teachers. Um, I had learned from Ms. Page about somebody, somebody in her family is a baby whisperer besides Ms. Page, and there's a junior baby whisperer, and who can train a baby to go to sleep like amazing. So I would, <laughs> I would recommend if you are struggling with, you know, setting a schedule for the baby, ask Ms. Page. She is a source of information about this putting baby to sleep. I wish I had known before, <laughs> but I didn't. And, but I want to pass that information um, along to you. Check in with her. You'll, you won't regret it. I can't wait. And tell Eli I'll make him green juice when the baby comes. <laughs> <laughs> You'll know what that is. <laughs> All right. Any, anybody else? Okay. Jeannie, you want to close us out? Um, sure. Shall we pray? <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for what you have taught us this evening through these wise women. And Father, thank you for each husband, each wife who were on the call this evening. I just pray that um, there are many takeaways that can be implemented this summer um, for their children. And for that, we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. And we'll, we'll get the list of resources that Nancy had. And as Vaughn said, you need to check out her videos on our YouTube channel. You can find it through the website because they're great. Lots of music stuff that because she teaches everybody. So go back and look at all the music stuff too. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. <laughs> <laughs>